Hi everyone, Harry here to talk about John Eastman's disbarment proceedings, and he's sort of seven-eighths of the way to being disbarred. So there's been a multi-day hearing in California, which is where his bar license is. And remember, he was a sort of con law professor at Chapman University who just became a kibitzer, and because he was saying something Trump liked, uh, all of a sudden was in the middle of stuff in November and December after the 2020 election and considered at first the architect, I would say now that we know a little more, one of the architects of the whole Mike Pence theory and uh, really, really involved with promulgating a lot of the kooky and flagrantly unconstitutional uh, ideas just to try to keep um, Trump in power. And he's now paying for it big time uh, professionally with uh, his law license, it would appear. And then, of course, he's also charged um, criminally. But basically, uh, they, you know, it's a pretty uh, serious process out in California. And you have a judge who's now issued a 128 page opinion uh, that adopts 10 of the 11 bases for disbarment that the state bar investigators brought against him. But that includes misleading the courts and plotting with Trump to derail the transfer of power. So this is basically the judge goes goes through all of Eastman's submissions and just just clobbers them saying, you know, all of it was based on on falsehoods uh and ignored um the the plain uh facts of the matter on the other side. Uh, remember, this is the guy who um, another White House uh, lawyer said, you, you better get yourself an effing criminal lawyer. And, you know, that this is um, crazy. Uh, but, you know, he stayed uh, with it. Remember, he's um, talking on the ellipse in his bizarro hat and getting to have a star turn. Um, this is on January 6th itself that he's now paying for dearly. Um Okay, so um, right now the he gets to appeal things, uh, but while he does, his license is suspended. It will go to a several judge panel, I believe, and I don't think it's very likely at all that they would reverse or do anything. So he's he's going to lose his license to practice law. He was already kind of a journeyman. Um, professor and, and, and he was sacked for misuse of the, um, the computer and other things having to do with his activity here. So, you know, we're talking about, um, someone who's really going far away to losing his livelihood will try to latch on maybe with some conservative foundation, uh, or, and the like, but he's really, um, definitely, uh, getting his comeuppance. Now, but what about Trump? Well, it really, it really mattered. We have these findings out there um, now. They won't specifically, uh, under the, the arcane rule, legal rules, apply against Trump because Trump isn't involved in litigating them, but they, they could apply against um, Eastman in subsequent proceedings. For example, the, uh, they'll, they may have some application at, in Fulton uh, County, though the, there'll be the question of whether applying them against him would prejudice other defendants. But I mean, he's litigated these now. But um, Trump, to the extent he's made feints in the direction of advice of uh, counsel um, and tried to, to say he relied on lawyers' uh, advice, it's got um, all kinds of problems. We know we know in New York, by the way, that he's backed off of that, although it's going to be a drama in New York where he's going to try, nevertheless, to sort of insinuate that he was relying on legal advice, but he doesn't have any of the prerequisites, including giving up all your attorney-client privileged uh, information, not just for the person you're relying on, but other um 
lawyers too, because the question is, did you rely on this in good faith? And if seven lawyers tell you one thing and you keep hunting till you get the eight, that, that doesn't cut it. Anyway, um, when Trump has averted to, uh, the lawyer he relied on, guess who it was? John Eastman. So it certainly can't avail him much that, uh, that Eastman has now been, uh, virtually disbarred for the very, um, information and advocacy that Trump supposedly would uh, have relied on. It, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't advance the view that he, he relied on this in good faith and it was solid um, information. Um, so, you know, this is uh, uh, not quite the, you know, the criminal context, but it's, but we really see it, you know, submitted to the crucible of litigation. His lawyer, uh, you know, hung in there and basically tried to say that the, it was reasonable and there was, you know, information out there that he could have uh, relied on and um, prior precedent and he did extensive scholarly work and the like. That was the thrust of the argument that the judge rejected in this scathing uh, long opinion. So, you know, that might be a preview of what he'll try to say in um, Fulton County and a preview of the faith that it really ought to uh, encounter if he does raise that, because these have always been completely cockamamie theories with no um, basis. You, you remember the one at the heart of it is is Pence, whose constitutional role under the 12th Amendment is to open the envelopes and announce the results like the Academy Awards. Uh, Eastman would ha give him the power to choose best picture uh, by virtue of his being the guy who opened it, you know, really flagrantly unconstitutional stuff that was, in effect, just a legal version of toadying up to, uh, to Trump. So anyway, he, uh, he pays the, the, the price now. It looks quite likely that, uh, and he won't practice again. It's suspended for now. It goes up on appeal and will, where it will probably be affirmed. And these findings and the opinion itself will have at least some, persuasive uh, impact going forward, I would say, including in Fulton County. And that, you know, that's the story with him. Just one thing to add is that Jeffrey Clark now, the man who would be AG, uh, you know, and an equally um, crazed fellow who nevertheless comes to Trump's attention because a MAGA member of Congress, Scott Perry, uh, brings him up. Oh, here's someone who can could give your, you know, uh, legal claim, uh, dre dress it up, but it was completely bogus. He's now in disciplinary proceedings in the District of Columbia where he has invoked his Fifth Amendment. Right. Uh, we, I had a little, um, YouTube on this yesterday. All the, all, you know, Pat Philbin, uh, and Jeff Rosen and Richard Donahue, the main guys at DOJ who rejected what he was trying to do, testified. And he didn't testify because he invoked his Fifth Amendment rights. So it doesn't seem to me that his um, prospects for prevailing against this um, mountain of evidence are very strong. But it's also telling um, that in, in this in another proceeding, you have a guy who rather than trying to testify himself about what he was thinking invokes the the fifth amendment all in all the trump lawyers are you know really um facing the music including uh he he also clark is a criminal defendant in fulton county so this in a sense is just a opening act to what's going to be a more serious uh set of charges to defend against but but pretty serious charges also for clark uh you know, a, a guy who he practices law, that's what he does. So he has some some um, career um, history in big shot law firms and maybe has some money salted away. But also, if he uh, gets disbarred, it's a permanent um, uh, impediment. OK, so that's the story with these uh, bar disciplinary hearings. And they are in some ways a, a detailed preview of what's to come especially in the cases where the uh, bar member, Jeffrey Clark, John Eastman, are also criminal defendants as they are in Fulton County. They are unindicted 
not unindicted. They are co-conspirators. Um, Jack Smith carefully doesn't call them unindicted co-conspirators, just co-conspirators, though they're not identified by name in the election interference case before Judge Chutkin, but they are indicted defendants in Fulton County. So this is a, a taste of, of what's to come for them, I would I would say, and it's pretty bitter. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.